Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. After about a week of gun game being out, here's a couple tips that you might not know. First thing I want to talk about is this progress bar that's on the top. Now, a lot of you have probably seen this, but I want to get into some details that maybe you didn't know. For example, many of you probably knew that at the top of those weapons, it tells you the level of that weapon, so you get a general idea about how far along that team is. But did you know that each of the dots represents the number of levels between the weapons? That kind of helps just at a quick glance knowing how far ahead the leader is if you're in second place. The next thing that people seem to have a little confusion about still is the boosted scores down in the bottom right here. So whenever you're playing, if you're stuck on a gun but your team is still getting kills, you'll be able to advance to the next gun for your team. So here in this example, one of my teammates got a kill directly after me, which is now going to allow me to boost past the gun that they would have gotten, which was the 3030, and boost into the charge rifle. You can see that it kind of preloads you for what's going to be after that, and you can see that the longbow is the next one after the charge rifle. Now one other thing about that little symbol down there that many of you might not know is that the number next to that boost plus three, that number four, that's telling you what level of gun that is. So just at a quick glance you can say I'm going to jump three levels to this gun and we are going to be on level four, in this example, when I reach that gun. Since we're talking about weapon progression, just make sure we're all on the same page. So the classification order stays the same. The exact weapons you get changes game to game. And that's kind of what makes this fun, is you do start with the assault rifles, move into the light machine guns, then submachine guns, shotguns, snipers, pistols, and then the throwing knife. Seems like the last couple always stay the same with uh, the RE45 going to the P2020 and then the knife. Seems like there's a little randomness within the classifications, but you get to see most guns, most games. All right, talking about teams in this mode. So you're always gonna be on Wolf Squad. That just seems the way it's programmed. And then Eagle, Bear, and Tiger kind of randomly distribute it. There is a chance of getting Nessie. It's one in a thousand. Um, but one thing I would recommend you consider is that on your squad, you do a recon legend and a movement legend at least. I think a defensive legend would be good to add in there, especially on King's Canyon. Um, but I've seen a lot of success with being able to take height quickly and being able to scan them. Uh, my personal favorites are Bloodhound and Seer for this, but, you know, to each their own. If you've got a particular one you like, go for it. But I think not having a recon is going to be detrimental for sure. My advice to you guys, if you're an average player, which I would describe as your 1v1s, your 50-50 or maybe better, your 1v2s you can do, but yeah, maybe like 30% of them you win, and then your 1v3s, you just, you're not going to win those. If you're that type of player, then take your time. That's why I want a recon legend in the team comps whenever I'm playing, is because then we can have some information. We're not just running in, especially like if you die and your teammates are still in there, wait a second, because if you run in then, your teammates are probably gonna die, then you'll be by yourself, and now you've given the enemy teams three kills instead of just the one or two kind of thing. You're giving them a bonus kill. So take your time, work as a team, as a squad, get as much information as you can, and work the cover. That's why I don't like just rushing in, because look, that Octane was just going to be rushing in and I caught him by surprise. That's the only reason I won that. That guy was one of the champions in this. So work with your team. Don't worry about height so much. You're always going to get third partied. So just look for those third party opportunities yourself. All right, two last tips for you guys. I don't have good videos of these, I'm sorry, but first one is Lifeline's Care Package. It delivers you blue shields. So that can be a pretty big deal in this game where shields are very limited and heals are very limited. Um, if you do it, do it on the edge of the map. Don't do it in the center. Otherwise, you're basically just sending out a beacon to take some free shields. The second thing I learned from Tony DeFoni, who I'm playing with here as well, and that is demotions. So if you melee somebody, that will send that person back one weapon. Now that can be pretty crucial if if they're trying to throw a knife at you and they're the kill leader on that team that can buy you some valuable time so it's a little extra embarrassment thank you guys for watching the video up to this point there's always more to learn there's always more tips i still have a few that i'm working out myself before i pass them on to you guys but if you like the video if you learned something please like or subscribe on the video so you can catch some of my other content have fun out there and i'll see you in gun run